This might be the only type of trick I could do on a board. I've given up on skateboards. What is this called even? What do we call this board? Somebody tell me. This is Sports Center. Hey, I'm Rizzo Roberto back from Philly, and it's finally here. A new NHL season officially kicks off tonight. Even though, you know, it kind of already did kick off on Friday, but you know, semantics. And if it's anything like last year, it should be a bit awkward. Because remember when the ref opened last season by welcoming Connor Bedard to the league? Connor, welcome to the NHL, man. Okay, guys, it's showtime. Let's have a great game. I can't. That was just so main character energy. You can't you can't be a ref and want to make it about yourself, okay? I get it. The pleasantries, but relax. This year the Hawks open their season against a much less historically significant team in the Utah Hockey Club. Now Bedard's opening season did not exactly go as planned. He sustained a broken jaw that required surgery in January, which limited him to just 68 games played on the season. Now despite missing time, he still led Chicago in goals and points and took home the Calder Trophy for Rookie of the Year. So how does that stack up against general talent historically? Well, who better to compare him to than the guy he shares a name with? Bedard was the most hyped player coming into the league since McDavid, and they both had pretty similar rookie years. McDavid is the perfect comparison, because he was also injured for a lot of his rookie season, but scored at a bit higher points per game pace than Bedard, although McDavid had more help on his rookie roster than Bedard did. And McDavid didn't actually win the Calder, Artemi Panarin did. However, the following season, McDavid officially arrived, leading the league in points and assists while capturing his first Hart Trophy. But no one has expected that from Bedard in year two, and the FanDuel odds are a nice guide to what's realistic. His goal line is set at 34.5 and, and his points at 79.5. But if you like him to pull a McDavid and hit 100 points in year two, you're getting 11 to 1 odds. And if you think he's going to win the heart, well, that's 30 to 1. But if you're new to the betting world like me, then boy, do I have a fun bet for you here. As Connor Bedard is the favorite to lead the NHL in jersey sales at plus 155, with my guy Austin Matthews right behind him at plus 210. So, how does Connor the second follow up in his sophomore season? Well, the journey to find out begins tonight. Officially, officially. This is his moment to prove everything we've already known. This is the time. The time is now. <laughs> to the NFL, we got some massive news this morning. The New York Jets have fired head coach Robert Sala. The news comes after the Jets lost to the Vikings this weekend in London, their second straight loss, as they lost 10-9 to Denver the previous week. Sala went 20-36 and in three-plus seasons as Jets head coach, never making the playoffs, and finishing last in the AFC East twice. There has been plenty of speculation about Sala's relationship with quarterback Aaron Rodgers. There was the hug-push incident from earlier in the year. That's just being rude, man. Like, if you're gonna dap it up, you gotta finish it with a hug. Like, isn't that bro code? And then there's this from a couple weeks ago, when Rodgers pushed back about Sala's comments on the pre-snap cadence. The, um, the cadence specifically, Robert said, that might be something you guys have to dial back a little bit. Um, is that something you think could potentially help the situation? That's one way to do it. The other way is hold them accountable. I mean, we haven't had an issue. We've had one false start. Morgan had one false start, I believe, until this, so. I mean, it's the eye roll for me. He's He's got rage inside of him. You feel it. You see it. Now, in Sala's defense, in all of his tenure as Jets head coach, these are the six quarterbacks he had under center. 33 games of Zach Wilson will be tough for any coach to win. Defensive coordinator Jeff Albrook will replace Sala on an interim basis, and his first game is a huge one, as the Jets host the Bills for Monday Night Football. A game you can watch on TSN, of course. Time now for my favorite segment and yours at We Love Sports Today. Why we love sports today. And typically this segment is me dunking on children because that's fun. But this is just a baby. And who can be against something so precious? Connor for Eggie. Connor for Matthew Kachak. <laughs> Aaron Ekblad. Aaron Ekblad. <laughs> Go Panthers. Go Panthers. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you another day. See you another day. See you another day. See another day. See another day. Oh my gosh, that is so cute. <laughs> That's so sweet. But now say Austin Matthews. As I mentioned off the top of the show, the start of the NHL season is upon us. And for a team like Edmonton who came so close last year, only to fall short in Game 7, the journey begins yet again. But for teams that lose in the Cup Final, getting back is easier said than done. Unless, of course, you have a generational superstar. Here's Eric Kirk with the question is... Edmonton went on a huge run last season. 
making it all the way to the finals before eventually falling to the Panthers in seven. And here's how that actually hurts their chances going into this season. Over the last 40 years, 23 teams have followed up their finals appearance with a first round exit or missed the playoffs entirely. In fact, only three teams have gone on to win the Stanley Cup, including last year's Panthers. The other teams to do it though, were actually pretty close to the 2024 Oilers. And that's because they were both led by generational talents who put up monster stat lines in the postseason. Gretzky's Oilers and Crosby's Penguins were both also involved in Stanley Cup final rematches, which has only happened 10 times in NHL history. And the initial winner has gone on to go back to back 70% of the time. Interestingly enough, Edmonton and Pittsburgh were two of the three teams to win their rematch. So maybe there is a path for McDavid's Oilers after all. The question is, can the Oilers go on another run? I was off yesterday and before you chirp me for taking vacation, because like, please. Just know that I have a map and a quest to visit every single ballpark in the majors. Now the Oakland A's kind of ruined that for me. Well, the Oakland A's management kind of ruined that for me, but it's okay, we'll discuss it another day. And when there is a chance to knock a new ballpark off my list, especially for a playoff game, well, I just gotta do it. But hey, at least I'm bringing back content. Here's my journey to Philly for NLDS games one and two to knock, you know, another one off the list. We've never been to Citizens Bank Park, so we made a last minute decision to walk into enemy territory and cheer for the Mets. But nothing is better than playoff baseball, and this is NLDS game one. I've never been booed so much in my life, and I've been doing this a long time. The language in this ballpark alone is not G-rated. Wheeler was dealing, but fortunately for the Mets, the Phillies weren't putting up a lot of numbers. It's time for a vibe change for the Mets. Went to grab some food. This pizza was a little dry, but honestly, delicious. Then we tried some Philadelphia water ice. And oddly enough, the second I started eating it, the Mets started rallying. My husband made some Mets friends, and the Mets took W. Now, can we be so lucky for game two? If you haven't noticed by now, my husband is a heckler. Really, all he's doing is riling up the Philly fans in this section. And the second Philly started putting runs up, we did not hear the end of it. Ooh, I could smell that walk-off coming from a mile away. What an incredible experience at a ballpark. I wouldn't have changed a thing. I did get spit on a bit, but I asked for an authentic Philly experience, and I feel like that's exactly what we got. Now, I hope what you've taken away from this journey is that Philly fans aren't as bad as they say they are. You know, there's bad fans in every city. So Philly just has some loud ones that tend to make the news, unfortunately. Did I see some rowdiness? Sure. Did I see security come and tell one of them to stop being so rude to Mets fans? Yes, but it's fine. It's fine. I love Philly. <laughs> now, since I posted some of those videos, do I have some Philly fans saying to me that I shouldn't be allowed to eat their food if I'm wearing Mets colors? Yes. So there are some Philly fans that maybe aren't as welcoming, and that's okay. That's it for me today. We'll see you for tomorrow, 3 Eastern, New Pacific. Have a good one.